Estimated arrival for 29 sunset, Baker Beach is 7 and 26 minutes. This is indeed a disturbing universe. Hello, greetings, and welcome. Welcome to the Stereo 999 YouTube channel. I am your host, the artist formerly known as Stereo Steve. And uh, today, and by today I mean the day that I am filming today, is August 30th. And I was just thinking about how uh, August 30th is my dad's birthday, in case he's watching me from wherever he is now. I would show some uh, records that uh, that uh, were his that kind of became mine, and uh, I'm gonna start with one I've talked about before. This is uh, Frank Sinatra, "Man and His Music." This this was a record he had. Uh, it's interesting. It kind of I think it kind of uh, corresponded with a TV special or something. Sinatra is singing his hits, but he's also talking between the songs. So it's almost like he's doing a guest DJ and talking about the stories behind the songs with the songs going in and out. That's kind of cool. But uh, who is my dad really a fan of? Elvis. And uh, yeah, this is... This is the same copy that he bought when I was a kid. Elvis, live on stage, February 1970. And this is, this is your classic Vegas Elvis, you know, starting with C.C. Ryder, doing Proud Mary, Poke Salad Annie, a version of the Beatles yesterday. Yeah, this is a goodie. Another Elvis record. Uh, Aloha from Hawaii by a satellite and uh, Elvis didn't really get to tour but at least he got to broadcast one of his shows all over the world okay, where's the picture where he's got yeah all right also more of Roy Orbison's greatest hits and uh, this one is good. This one has uh, It's Over and Blue Bayou and uh, Leah and In Dreams, which was in uh, the movie Blue Velvet. So yeah, the second volume of Roy Orbison's Greatest Hits that came out on the Monument label. Arthur Prysock and Count Basie on Verve. And yeah, he liked those deep voiced singers like Billy Eckstein, Al Hibbler, et al. And uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is some good late night sitting with your drink and uh, reflecting on what has gone wrong with your life music. <laughs> it's beautiful. This one I remember from childhood. I, I kind of cleaned it up and put it in a plastic bag. It's a three-record box set on the roulette label, The World of Count Basie, the most powerful force in jazz. And I kind of taped it up so the records would just kind of come out the top because the box has been mangled over the years. And this one, this is one of those Warner Brothers special products compilations does not contain the song, My Girl, but it's all songs with girls' names for the titles. And it's a three record set. Yeah, I remember my dad took this home and I ended up listening to it a bunch because there's some good songs. This is where I first heard uh, the Left Bank Walk Away Renee was on this compilation. It's also got Shadows of Night, Gloria, The Monkees, Valerie, Kenny Rogers, Ruby Don't Take Your Love to Town, Rod Stewart, Maggie. This is pretty cool. These, these, 
these Warner special product comps. They're pretty good. I've showed a few of these. All right, last but not least, another one I've shown before. And I actually found this album later on. But what my dad had was a 45 with two songs off of this album. And he said he knew this guy. He said he, said he knew this guy, Bill Cunningham. And uh, again, I stick to my, my theory that Seth MacFarlane is a time traveler. But yeah, Bill Cunningham, lounge singer. It's weird. You can't find any information about this guy online. But you can stream this album online. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a Ouija board, so I can't really ask my dad what his deal was. So it's left to speculation. Okay, uh, let's uh, back to the original programming after the break. <laughs> She went to a doctor and she was examined and her white blood count was way up, I think. And um, they also saw some military-type helicopters in the area. And what I believe uh, they encountered was some sort of secret military project, uh, a secret weapon or something that had gone awry, a um, microwave or nuclear-powered craft of some sort. And uh, that, to me, was the most convincing of all the uh, people in did, did she say that, that she saw a, an object, a, a craft of some kind? They saw a very, very intense bright light.
another human being. You gotta be all out of beef jerky, man. You gotta be really fucking hungry. But it happens, doesn't it? It still happens to this day. Bunch of people stranded in the wilderness, run out of Pop-Tarts, gotta eat something. Might as well be Steve. <laughs> How do you decide who to eat first? How do you decide who's first on the barbecue rack? And we're back. We are back. How is it going? Um, so, yeah, now we're going to continue with my uh, record organizational project in reverse alphabetical order that I've been doing for the last few videos. You can go back and watch those if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you don't feel like doing that, we'll just... Just stay here and we'll get into it. Um, so I'm reorganizing my records in reverse alphabetical order. And the letter that we're on this week is T. My first name is Mr. My middle name is that period. My last name is the T. I'm going to start with one that's kind of a bonus because it's not in the rock section. It's in a different section. And it's one of my dad's records that I forgot to mention before. And that is this. This is box set. This is from sometime in the 70s. This is the London Symphony Orchestra version of T Tommy, the Who's rock opera. And uh, what does it say? Okay, 1972 this came out. And it's got, yeah, the London Symphony Orchestra with a rock band performing Tommy with guest vocalists, including uh, like Richie Havens, I think. Uh, and uh, Rod Stewart. Maggie Bell, I think Ringo Starr. And then with these illustrations. So yeah, so this is, uh, I've mentioned this in, in comments I've left for other people about how I knew the rock opera Tommy before I really knew the Who because my dad had this and I would read through the lyrics and follow the story of Tommy. And then, you know, a few years later, the movie came out. That was trippy, but here's, here's the... Uh, Gatefold kind of looks like a pinball machine. And uh, yeah, so Pete Townsend, Sandy Denny, Steve Winwood, Roger Daltrey, Ringo Starr, Rod Stewart. Yeah. So there we go. Tommy, can you hear me? So that's that, and that was that was another that was another record that was in my dad's record collection that I would always dig into. So now we're going to get into some records from the actual T section of my collection here. This is the traditional Fools. This is from two thousand eight, and traditional Fools was Ty Siegel's first band heavily garage rock influenced. Uh, he was a big fan of uh, Billy Childish and the head coats and the milkshakes around this time. And they do Davy Crockett. It's on white vinyl. OG on Make a Mess Records. Yeah, I knew, I knew Ty Siegel because he had a brief stint as a KOSF DJ before his music career took off. And... Just a very cool guy. Very, very sincere love for rock and roll. Okay. Next, um, I was talking in my last video when I showed the Thelonious Monk record, I was talking about a record swap in Santa Cruz. And I didn't really talk about the uh, National Lampoon vacation-like journey to and from 
San Francisco to Santa Cruz in a van that this other doofus borrowed from somebody without permission that broke down. But for everything that went wrong on this trip, including me selling some important records for way too cheap. I found amazing stuff. Here's another amazing record that I found at that swap. This is Traffic Sound, a psychedelic band from Peru. Uh, this is not an original, but this is some kind of 1990s limited edition reissue, number 262 out of 500, Virgin by Traffic Sound. Featuring the song Meshkalina. And uh, beautiful record. Uh, like, okay, another cool T record. Come Together by Ike and Tina Turner and the Ike Etts. And there's Tina. And of course, their hit version of the Beatles come together. Also, uh, the song Evil Woman by Crow that Black Sabbath covered. They do this on here, but they change it to Evil Man. All right. Okay, another one of my favorite bands that I've talked about before from kind of from the days of like early industrial music. 23 Skidoo, and this is their album, Urban Gamelon. And uh, yeah, they get into the heavy. You can even see in the grooves just how, how much heavy percussion forms the basis of this record. Heavy percussion with a lot of space in between. And the first song which is called F-U-G-I, and on the single was called Coup, was kind of the most well-known song on this. Um, has, a, has a really funky bass line, which was kind of borrowed by the Chemical Brothers and uh, samples from the movie Apocalypse Now. But yeah, you know, if you like Cabaret Voltaire, you know, I mean, definitely check out 23 Skidoo. All right. Here's another record. This is another record I've shown a few other people show. It's a psychedelic masterpiece. And it's Think Pink by Twink. Twink being John Adler, who was drummer for The Pretty Things during their psychedelic SF Sorrow era. He also played in the band Tomorrow, which was a band Steve Howe was in before he was in Yes. But he made some really trippy solo records. This is his most well-known, Think Pink by Twink. This is the Pink Vinyl A Karma label reissue. And there's just, there's some awesome songs on here, like 10,000 Words in a Cardboard Box, Tiptoe on the Highest Hill, and rock and roll the joint. Oh, yeah. Okay, moving right along. I'll tell you about Phaedra. Phaedra by Tangerine Dream. This is, this is kind of transitional from their early, more kind of abstract sounding stuff to their kind of sequenced hypnotic, synthesizer stuff because um, this this has the hypnotic qualities but it's a little more dissonant than say stratosphere and this is a later pressing maybe from the 80s on this kind of style of virgin label and there's no gatefold but you know for this kind of music I, I feel like it's better to have a clean later pressing that's not going to sound all crackly than to have a beat up original pressing because you know the music like this and like classical music ambient music music that has a lot of subtlety you need the record to be totally clean so you're not distracted by any scratchy crackly sounds that's kind of a no-brainer 
All right. Now for something completely different. Johnny Taylor. And this was kind of his crossover album. I mean, his early stuff is more bluesy. But this is Johnny Taylor's album, Eargasm, which has the hit song, Disco Lady, which... Shake it up, shake it down, move it in, move it around, disco lady. If you don't like that song, you, you got to check your pulse because, yeah. All right. Uh, T-Rex. And this is part of that Historia de la Musica Rock series. I think these came out in Spain, but... They were always plentiful in bargain bins back in the 80s, these compilations. And they were cool because they were kind of an odd mix of tracks. Um, I have a few of these. Uh, I have the... Hi, editing Steve here. Um, so my phone kind of crapped out. It was getting too full of storage. And... Uh, there's a gap where a little chunk of this segment is missing, and me here saying this is going to just fill that gap. And then, <laughs> then we'll talk about uh, Terminal Cheesecake. Pony Boy is a real catchy song. And, uh, yeah, Unhealing Wound. I've got the seven inch single of that. But, uh, this is absolutely necessary to have this record on vinyl if you find this record at all because the cd version there's no song separation it's all one continuous track you can't pick out the songs i think they were just kind of being assholes doing it that way but yeah this is this is one of those albums that is like high in my canon and not too many people seem to know or give that much of a shit about. But anyway, my phone is acting weird, so I'm going to just kind of wrap it up with this. Okay, then. That's my video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, peace. And now, kiddies, it's time to realign your hi-fi set. We are now going to uh, generate a tone for you. What is the tone, Harry? Oh, yeah. One million cycles. What's the matter? Can't you hear anything? Turn your volume up a little bit. One million cycles coming your way. Don't hear anything, huh? What's the matter with your set? Something's wrong with your set if you can't hear one million cycles. That's it. I'm getting out of here.